Yo, 2020, son. What a year. What a year to be forgotten. But amongst all of the bullshit that 2020 brought, we got some solid albums and some solid music. So let's get into my top 10, my favorite albums of the year. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third, y'all guys' third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider clicking the subscribe button bottom right-hand corner. Now, I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that 2020, yo, a fucking doozy of a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the worst years that I've ever had personally to date. And so I know that a lot of other people feel like that. I got coronavirus. I got the stomach flu for the first time. My brother had a collapsed lung. My job was making me, my job was making me delete the channel basically because it was a reputational risk to the firm that I worked for. And then everybody stepped in and then like, like allowed me to go full time on YouTube, which I didn't even plan on doing for at least another year or two. So my year has had like a crazy amount of up and downs and so has y'all's and i know we've all been getting stir crazy because because we've basically been forced into isolation and we're not that we're not that's not that's not within our genetic makeup to want to be isolated we want to be in crowds we want to go have fun and we couldn't do that so we had to find ways to entertain ourselves and luckily for us luckily for us while we had to take the entire year off music did not so allow me to go over my top 10 albums of the year that i listened to that i found solace in that that i was that that kept me sane in the middle of this shitty ass 2020 starting this little shindig off we got at the 10 spot we're going 10 to 1 obviously we got at the 10 spot logic with no pressure this album is not going to be on most people's top 10 this album is this, this and like it's probably not going to make most people's top 50 but it made my personal top 10 for a few reasons. Reason number one, went back to Logic and the old the old like Logic that we saw incoming whenever we had Under Pressure, we went back to that old Logic for the outgoing album. He gave, he gave us on this last album everything that the fans have been craving from all the criticisms that everybody had over the, the two prior albums to No Pressure. And to me, that was very important for Logic to do, especially when he said that he was retiring, that put a lot of pressure on this album because like who wants to go out on three very, three very negatively criticized albums in a row? We already had two in a row before No Pressure. The worst thing that could have come out of this album is that nobody fucking liked it. And then everybody's like, oh, it's a good thing that he's leaving the game because we're tired of having all these bad albums it's just it's, it's a perfect way to like bow out with grace it's very it's very seinfeld-esque in the way that he went out so not only do i fuck with the album because of the way that it sounds but i fuck with the album even heavier because he went out like a lot of people don't get to go out he bowed out with grace he went out on top and most people most people don't go out until it's too late so i'm happy that he went out in the way that he did with no pressure next up on the list at the number nine spot is an r&b album brent fias fuck the world and when i tell you that his sound is one that like i was taken back by is like damn i've been i needed this i needed this style of r&b in my life it's because of this album like to me his sound is very unique a lot of r b in 2020 a lot of it tries to a lot of it tries to pull from trap hip-hop it tries to it tries to use heavy 808 like like bryson tiller i guess you can you can you can say like that trap soul sound that bryson tiller came up on like that is the sound of r b in today's 2020 so for brent to come in here and this entire album like most of it doesn't have any heavy 808 to me that's something that like grabbed my attention very quickly the production is very free it's very light is very atmospheric that in combination with the lyrics which are very like fuck literally fuck the world which are very i have flaws that i own and i don't even see them as flaws if anything i see them as pros the way that he talks about using women and the way that he talks about disposing of them as objects that from the get-go i thought wouldn't work over this type of production style because this type of production style like i said is very atmospheric it's very airy it's very like it's very dreamy i guess you could say his voice and his vocal tone is very powerful and emotional filled but yet the lyrics are so emotionless it's just a combination that comes together and fits and gels so well together on the album next up at the number eight spot this is this is a group this is an album that that they were meant they were meant to thrive they were meant to they, their sound was meant to be played 
in 2020, and that is Run The Jewels with their album RTJ4. There could not be a more perfect artist and there could not be a more perfect album to, to basically be the soundtrack to, to the political climate of 2020 than Run The Jewels and this album. It's a classic Run The Jewels album, but it just hits so much heavier in 2020. And their, and their entire style of fuck the establishment, their entire just style of anarchy, the style of anarchy against just laying down what politicians and what people say, it, it just fit perfectly in 2020. These songs outside of 2020, these songs in like 2017, 2018, they they would they would hit, but because of the because of the the moments in 2020 that that the world has seen, it's almost like it's almost like they hit harder, and it's almost like they're saying we told you so this entire time. For this politically charged, for this politically tense like moment in history that you and I are living, that we are all living through, that will be written in future history books to come. This album was born to thrive in this moment of history. Next up at the number seven spot is going to be somebody that most of y'all that live that are watching this probably don't know and most of the world doesn't know. But at the seventh spot, we have Santino Le Saint with Rage of Angels. Now, when I tell you that this is that this is a sleeper of an artist, that, that the entire world is sleeping on this guy. And I only found him because I because I'm subscribed to Colors. And let me tell you that I was so glad that I found him because of that performance. It's very much so an album full of pain and numbness toward love and toward toward loving future women because of pain that has come from loves in the past and it's something that it's throughout the entire album he talks about it and it's something that he is he is non-apologetic for like he knows his truth and he's just letting the girl know who's trying to come into his life like you, you don't know what you're getting yourself into and i didn't feel a thing when you were touching my skin like i left the battle without without a scar guess i'm way too cold and i'm so far gone you thought you struck gold with me but 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 you can't compare to my memories like like those lyrics are just you're he's owning his truth he knows who he is he knows he's not changing not for any girl and he's trying he's trying to tell them and that's basically the same theme throughout the entire album so his lyrics mixed with his vocal tone and and the sound of his voice and his image it all provides the perfect seedlings planted into the ground for what eventually in the next few years could become a star in the r&b game this album is not perfect by any means but for his first album if you have any doubt to what i'm saying go listen to cigarettes and alcohol the colors performance on youtube and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about now next up at the number six spot we have denzel curry and kenny beats collaboration album unlocked now this is one that i feel like everybody treated as if it was like a side project for both of them but really this is like this is this was an amazing an amazing project collaboration between them kenny beats style his style of production to go with denzel curry's very aggressive flow and delivery and and, and his vocals and and textures in his voice and what he talks about in his lyrics like they they it was a perfect match but the reason why it made the list at the almost halfway mark is because of the way the way that they went about putting out the album just the creativity that every single song is a story within a larger story timeline that has that has animation to go along with it to, to bring you into the world it's an amazing collaboration project one of the better ones that i've heard in some time so after the sixth position which is unlocked that brings us to the halfway point at number five with polo g the goat now polo g is someone that i have wanted to put on the channel but i just never got around to it because there was other music that fit the channels that fit the channel's mo more i guess you could say but polo g is someone that i listen to outside of youtube extremely heavily polo g is is probably at the forefront he is the leader of his generation of rap of his style of rap which is like i've, I've said it before but like it's pain-filled rap it's hood rap, it's melodic hood, pain, struggle, like it's all of those things wrapped up into one package and nobody nobody is at the level of Polo G and then I would say right under him is Lil Durk. Every song on the album is telling a very visceral story of what it is like being addicted to medication because of the place that you come from. It tells a very real story of who he was and the lifestyle that he lived. Everything that he says on the mic is 100% true. There is no embellishment for the sake of entertainment. Everything is raw everything is real he's telling his truth and that is one of the reasons that makes his rap extremely powerful because you know that all these horrific things that he's talking about he has actually lived through and because of the capability of telling his story on the mic this album is aptly named the goat he is by far the best rapper in his generation next up at the number four spot this is gonna be and this is gonna be an album that's gonna catch all of y'all motherfuckers by surprise because that's just this album is just not what my channel is about but at number four we have taylor swift 
with folklore. How crazy is that, that we go from Denzel Curry, aggressive ass rap, then we go to Polo G, very pain filled hood rap, right down on into Taylor Swift's folklore. <laughs> Taylor Swift being up for album of the year at the Grammys. Now, obviously we've had this Grammy talk and I don't think that it's, it doesn't hold as much weight as it used to be, especially with the after hour snub and, and with snubbing Harry Styles and, and, and BTS. Like it's, there's very, there's a lot of politics that go in the background of the Grammys, but Taylor Swift, even through all those politics, if those politics were not there, this album deserves to be a nominee and potentially the winner of album of the year. I have listened to most of Taylor's albums, especially after what happened with Kanye West. Obviously she like changed her sound and she got a little bit more dark. She's got a little bit more adult. And when I say dark, I don't mean dark, especially comparing to Polo G, but just a darker, not as not as light, not as innocent of a sound that, that she had prior to that incident. It's kind of in the same way that Rihanna switched up her sound after the, after the whole Chris Brown incident. Taylor did the same thing, maybe not at the same level, but she did the same thing with her sound. And that's when she kind kind of propelled herself into global superstardom. But this album right here, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of you know everybody just isolating themselves, who's to say that these artists aren't doing the same thing? And she did, and she put out this album that caught everybody by surprise. Not just the release of the album being less than a year to the album prior, but just the sound of the album is something that we had never heard from Taylor Swift before. It's very stripped down, it's very indie, it's very, I don't know how many times I can say very, so I'm gonna stop saying that, but it is masterfully executed and her songwriting on this album her songwriting her ability to paint the picture for you of the story that she's telling in each individual song never been better in my personal opinion this is taylor swift's best album and it is it's a very refreshing sound that's a that's a departure from what you would expect from her so after taylor swift at number four we're getting into the top three these are people that are making the podium at the third earnest 2020 album olympics and for the bronze medal at number three we have freddie gibbs and the alchemist with alfredo now a lot of people don't know freddie gibbs unless you're a true hip-hop head but freddie gibbs being nominated for album for rap album of the year he should 100% away from Royce the 5'9". And by the way, Royce would have been an honorable mention for this list if I had an honorable mentions list because it's a solid album that he put out, but it's not as, I didn't like it as much as the Book of Ryan. And I also didn't like it as much as Alfredo. So so aside from Royce the 5'9", who is obviously lyrically gifted, Freddie Gibbs and the Alchemist should be a shoe in for, for winning rap album of the year at the Grammys. This collaboration between a true hip hop lyricist, between a true like, like grimy hip hop artist and the alchemist who is known, who is an icon in hip hop for his for his boom bap style of production. These two coming together, it, it was bound to be a perfect rap album, which it, which it basically is. It's such an effortless and natural sound that came out of this collaboration. Moving on to the number two spot after Alfredo at number three, we have Mac Miller with Circle. R.I.P. This album, I, you know, like I, I don't even know what to say about this album. If it wasn't for the album that's at the number one spot, this one should have been a shoe in for my number one. It's a perfect posthumous album. When it was released, I was so filled with all these mixed emotions because when I heard it all the way through, I was like, yo. It's like Mac was still here and it brought up all the emotions that I felt from when he passed. And like I said, I really don't I really don't feel too much emotion from when when celebrities pass. But he was the first artist who passed that I connected with at a deeper level. So it hit me really hard. So when his album came out and the producer who, who was collaborating with him finished the album and it ended up sounding exactly like what I would have expected from Mac still being alive. I, I was I was filled with happiness. I was filled with sadness. I was filled with with relief that they treated that that they tr treated the album with in the respect that they did, not in the respect with the respect that they did. Like it was just it was just a very emotion filled. It was a very emotion filled moment for me. But having said that, whenever I come to an objective list that I am making, I try to put the fact that that the album is posthumous. I try to put the fact that I wanna that I wanna respect his legacy and just listen to the album as if he was still here. And if Mac was still with us, this album would still be number two on my list because of the way that the album fits and the way that the album accompanies the first album of the two album series swimming in circles this album actually for me had very little hip-hop it was very much more influenced by R&B by blues by like it was very it was very slow paced compared to swimming swimming had a little bit more hip-hop within it so this it's just like a it's just like a yin and yang situation and it all it all fit together perfectly in my eyes and the album just reminds us and reminds his fans and reminds the world that he 
he was more than just a rapper. He was a true, a true musician in every sense of the word. So with Mac being at the number two spot, I'm pretty sure anybody that knows this channel and me is fully aware of what my number one, my gold medal winner, my number one spot on the podium and who it belongs to. And that is The weekend with After Hours. I can't even begin to tell you how frustrated I still am that he did not get a nomination for album of the year with the sales that the album did, with the charts, with, with where the singles were on the charts, with his dedication to the persona and to the storyline and to the concept that the album is, like everything about it just screams, just screams Grammy nominated. And not only just the Grammys, but whenever I wanted to compare my list after I compiled it to like to actual, to music, to music journalists, to people who write for publications, and I and like I wanted to compare it to their top 10, to their top 25, to their top 50, I went through like three or four articles and this album didn't even make top 50. And I'm like, what the fuck are these people listening to? The relationship that The Weeknd has to his fans compared to the to the relationship that The Weeknd has to, to the music industry, it's almost like it's going down the route of J. Cole. Like, like everybody, like J. Cole has diehard fans and he makes really good music, but it's almost like it's almost like Twitter and it's almost like music publications think it's cool to 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 not be a fan of J. It's like they're being hipsters. They're going against the grain by not being a fan of J. Cole. And I feel like that's the same way, but with, but with even less validity for the weekend. Just from the sheer numbers that The Weeknd did alone this year, he he should be on everybody's top 50 at least. Just, just looking at it from an objective standpoint, this album, in my eyes, is perfect from front to back. The way that the album is laid out, where the songs are placed in the album, what, what he's talking about, the emotion that he has within the songs. Every single song within the album needs to be in the album for one reason or another. It either It's either leading into, it's either following up from, a, from the storyline prior, or or it's a segue leading into the next portion, the next chapter of the story of the album. It, the, the album is perfectly laid out. And like I said, that entire story and that entire growth from the 20 year old kid to the 30 year old man and how his lyrics and how his lyrics have evolved and we're seeing new emotion from Abel that we've never seen before on prior albums up to at least My Dear Melancholy. All of that, all the subject matter, all the expert vocal performances, he's obviously the best singer that he's been in his entire career as of right now. All of that with the soundscape that, that that the that, that album provides with 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 r b with hip-hop and with 80 synth pop like all mixed together all that mixed together with the visual storylines that he's giving you in the music video and the character that he portrays this album this album is more than an album the album is an experience it just solidifies in my mind the 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 juggernaut of an artist the juggernaut of a performer just everything that abel and the weekend has built from his mixtape days to after hours it is all one 100% legitimate. And for all of those reasons, that is the reason why The Weeknd with After Hours takes the number one spot on my list for best album of 2020. But that brings us to the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you see, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment down below. If you like what you see enough, please consider subscribing. Long form breakdowns, analytical thoughts, feedback, all those kind of things are how we do it around here. So if that's your thing, hit the subscribe button. Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at The Third Earnest, just like the channel. The links are down in the description below. Hit up the Discord. Discord also linked in the description below. We got crazy. We got crazy content coming in 2021. We got video games. We got streams. We got it's just, it's just we're, we're going we're expanding all the horizons over here. So don't miss out. Become part of this little family. Click subscribe. But that's all that I got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate everybody's time. And like I always say at the end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.